What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. So a lot of you guys have been asking how I'm doing my overlays on my videos. I'll kind of show you right here how I'm gonna do that. The outside here. Now those overlays on that video, I'm actually doing those with the GoPro software. From my newest GoPro, the GoPro Hero 5 Black, which I'm showing you guys right here, which is a really cool uh, new style of GoPro. Some of the features are that it has a built-in LCD screen, and you can pretty much do everything from the menu right there. But let me show you what you have to do to turn this telemetry on. So you're gonna be able to get, you're gonna be able to get speed, you're gonna be able to get distance and elevation. You're also going to be able to get like a little map that looks just like a video game. It looks really, really awesome there in the corner. Um, even if you want, you can like throw a little GoPro logo up in the corner here if you want to, and I'll show you guys how to do that. First thing you're gonna need is that GoPro though. If you have an older style GoPro, like a GoPro Hero 3 Black or a 4 Black, it's not gonna have this option. So I have a link to the GoPro Hero 5 down here in the description. Overall, the Hero 5 is just a much better camera. I like that it has an integrated screen into the back. It works really, really well, whereas this use the backpack style screen which just ate a ton of battery. The battery life on the Hero 3, which is the other camera that I have, was total crap. The 5 is killing it with the, uh, with the battery life. It works really, really well. And let me show you what you gotta do first to turn this stuff on. So first you're gonna hit that little button here on the right. All we have to do is enable the GPS. So to do that, we're just gonna swing down from the top here, and then we're gonna click on Preferences. Then we're just gonna scroll right down here to where it shows GPS, boom. And your GPS needs to be on. So that is gonna take basically the location and that's gonna enable all this stuff so that you can do in post the cool things that you wanna do. So make sure that that's on. Other than that, my general settings that I rock cause I like it kind of movie-like, I rock my GoPro in a 1080p because that's when I put on YouTube, I put everything in 1080p and I record in 24 frames per second. When I have it on my helmet, I put it in a super wide view or super view. You can also change the uh, the aspect ratios of this kind of, uh, just to sort of show you a different field of view or a field of vision. Uh, when, like I said, when I put it on my helmet to get that side view. Once you record that awesome footage, you're gonna wanna throw it onto your computer. So go ahead and hook your GoPro into your laptop, either via USB cable or take the SD card out and throw it in your laptop or desktop computer. And I'll show you what you have to do in post to make it look awesome. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to your launch pad and you wanna make sure that you have the GoPro Quick app. It looks like this icon right here with the little Q. If you don't have that installed, you're gonna need to go ahead and install that on your computer. So go to the GoPro website and go ahead and download and install that app. You're gonna wanna open it up and import your media. If you have files to import, you're just gonna click right here under import files. It's gonna import your files onto the computer and once it's finished, it will show import complete. Right there with that big green arrow. From there, all we have to do is go to media and find what we wanna find. Now, you can see that I have some stuff here that's already been done. You can see the overlay, like for example, on this video. So from the media screen, all you have to do is just click on a file that you like. Now the video will kind of just load. If we just kind of scrub through this, we could see, all right, this is me autocrossing out at Thunder Hill Raceway. Uh, this is a good part. I'm getting some counter steer in there. And uh, you know, it'd be a little more fun and a little more entertaining with some numbers to back up the speed that we have there because we're seeing it on the video, but you know, that just doesn't do it an amazing justice. So you have all these different options here, GoPro logo, info cluster, speed tracker, GPS path, speedometer, and G-Force. Now, all I have to do is click one of these things. So we're just gonna go through it and I'll show you guys each and every little thing that it does. So first off, GoPro logo. Now I'm actually not even seeing it. Okay, there it is, it's over there in the corner. And what's really cool is you can make this like as big as you want. So if you just wanna brand the crap out of your video or something like that, you could throw it up there. You know, if you wanna just throw a little bit of GoPro down there in the corner, no problem, uh, no big deal. Now for me, I don't like leaving that one on, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Now I'll show you guys the info cluster. Okay, so the info cluster you can see right here um, we have the date, the time, the elevation gained, 
and the altitude, total overall altitude, and the distance. So this is really cool because we actually see, okay, right here, I'm at, you know, 0% or 0 feet. Now I'm going up to 3 feet. And you can kind of see that, uh, you know, my altitude is changing quite a bit there. Now we can turn that off and I'll show you guys what speed tracker looks like. Now speed tracker is really cool too. This is actually great for, you know, if you want to cut this down and just get a, an idea and a feel of like what the fastest part of your track was or your run down the hill, your run down the ski slope, something like that. You know, if you're snowboarding down a hill, you want to know how, you know, how consistent you were in different parts, uh, you can use this. Then we have the GPS path. This one's super cool. It like reminds me of Gran Turismo. Lots of people on my channel are like, dude, that's freaking sick. Looks like a video game and I have to agree with that. It's gonna show you the distance over your start stop time and it's gonna just kind of lay that path out in a GPS style format. And it looks super cool. Like I said, with each and every one of these things, you can place them wherever you want on the screen and make them however long you want them to be. Uh, height wise, you know, height, width, all that type of stuff. So that is super cool. We'll turn that off. Speedometer, this one's like a must pretty much for everything. And what's cool about the speedometer is this thing completely adjusts. Okay, so we're just gonna make it, we're gonna make it freaking giant here. Okay, I guess that's as big as it goes. I was wondering if it went bigger. That Apparently that's as big as it goes right there. Um, so you can see, you know, I have up to like 90 miles an hour on here, right? Now it's kind of cool because what this thing will do is it will sort of adjust. If you have like a top speed, I think on this track I got up to like, I don't know, 75, 76 miles an hour, something like that, um, you know, in this certain section. And it's cool because, you know, it kind of puts it up here. So it gives you like a nice little sweeping limit of how fast you were going. It just makes it really cool because if you're only going like a max of 30, it's just, it's just nice to see this, uh, this bigger sweep and this bigger differential on there. And then also you can see that it gives you the northeast, southwest, which is super cool as well. For me, when I have it on my GoPro, I like to run it about this big. I'll throw it in the corner, just blocking my face because that's a spot that I know is going to be consistent. And then I love this one. This is probably my favorite thing on here. This is the G-Force meter. Um, I like to have this one pretty big because I just think it's really fun to watch. Um, when I have this thing like totally set up, I usually do that and then sometimes oh, I'll do the GPS path, for example. And those are pretty much the only ones I run. Um, I don't find the other stuff necessary for like, like track driving, like this sort of thing where I'm doing autocross. Um, you know, it just doesn't seem necessary to me. So I'll just kind of replay that and you can see like how many G we're pulling. We're pulling over 1.2, 1.3 G. Coming up over this blind crest right here. I think it could tap out about 1.2 G in a four wheel slide. Come through, back, back, doing a big old drift and you know, just coming out and it, it just looks so cool. All right, so from there guys, all you gotta do is create the clip. So if you went to share, for example, I guess you could actually share this and post directly to YouTube, which is really nice, you know, if that's all you're gonna do. But if you're gonna put this into some other software and chop it up a bit more and kind of refine it, um, then you're gonna wanna do this. You have to click create a clip. Okay, now you can see I was at the 44 second mark of this video when I started this. Now, what you're gonna notice is this blue little bar, okay? So hit the space bar, that's kind of going to stop it. Now, if I hit save right now, it's only going to give me this minute and 26 seconds. So if you want to do it from the beginning, you need to click all the way back and make sure this blue, you know, is in this area. But this gives you a really good way to just kind of trim your video really quickly. If you wanted to just trim some off the end, you could trim it right there. No big deal. And then all you have to do is hit save. Once you hit save, I like to rename this file to whatever it was. So this was round seven SCCA um, S3 run two, okay? Now it's gonna have your quality. Basically you can only downsize from here. Um, apparently you can put it in 30 frames. I don't know how that would really work. That would have to upscale framing, which would be kind of weird to me. Um, so I'm going to save it in the same format. I recorded it 24 frames a second. Now it's gonna export that video. And once that process is complete, you'll be able to review your video and watch it, put it into your editing, upload it on YouTube, 
show all your friends how fast you were going. I definitely recommend to go ahead and pick up a GoPro Hero 5. These things are sick. They interlink with each other super easy. Like the whole platform is just so much, it's just so much easier. Everything's waterproof. Everything's right here and ready to go. Whereas your other stuff, you kind of had to run a lot more accessories, an extra case, um, you know, an extra screen, an extra battery backpack, all that stuff. Now it's just condensed into this one simple little thing and you can do awesome stuff like overlays on it. If you guys haven't checked out my other videos, go ahead and check those out and I recommend to subscribe to my channel if you guys want to see more footage on my 2017 Audi S3. I'm also doing a 1988 BMW E30 race and track build and that thing is coming along very well. Also have a 1965 International Scout that I do things on time to time and a 1937 Ford truck. So my channel is pretty much geared towards automotive stuff, but I do do other random how-to things as well. So definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell, guys. If you are a subscriber and you have not checked that bell, I know YouTube has kind of changed it up. If you subscribe to a channel, basically you have to hit that and notifications to know when I post a video. So make sure to hit that, guys. Comment down below if you guys use something else. I know there's other software that you can use that's on your phone, like for example, Harry's Lap Timer, something like that. Let me know what you guys think, and we'll talk to you soon. Later, and wrench on.